Hello everyone and welcome to the channel, I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and in today's video we are going to fly the Phoenix A320 with the CRT screen mod once again. And not only the CRT screen mod, but we are flying an excellent livery here on the Iberia Echo Charlie India Echo Fox Juts, repainted by Rem13 of Flightsim.to, really recommendable, he's put some awesome details into his repaint, so do head out and download that paint, it's really really good. Alright, so... We are standing over here in Madrid once more, and we're going to fly down to Malaga, which is a lovely approach over mountainous terrain, which I really wanted to do for a long time, but uh, only really just got around actually um, doing it. So let's go right for it in the sim over here. Malaga, one of my favorites uh, when I flew the 737 back in the day due to the lovely approach on both sides runway 13 as well as runway 31 both are really beautiful and the scenery from nk studios is very nice as well okay so do follow me inside as we're about to set our airbus up and we're going to be boarding through the jetway over here like pilots usually would and there are just a couple of details that i really want to point out in this livery for example looking at the rendition of the business class seats over here with the um, added pillows or the added um, headrests then the um, divider in the cabin area over here the xl seats a really beautifully done livery really can't overemphasize that it's a really really well done one also when we now head right into the cockpit well let's by the way quickly go ahead and turn on the ground service bus over here so when we head into the cockpit, you can see it's equipped with the CRT screens, but it also has a lot of custom stickers inside the cockpit, which I really, really appreciate. So really a very well done livery. I cannot overemphasize that. Okay, so let's take a seat on the captain's seat from where we're going to fly today, and we're going to start powering the airplane up. So we do have the master switches off, start select, the norm, weather radar is now set, landing gear down, wipers off, batteries above 25 and a half volts, so batteries can come on and the external power can come on as well. All right, from here it does take the bus a little while to start powering up, so while it's doing that, let's go ahead and load up our um, EFB. So tap to import here is our flight scheduled off block in 22 minutes then a very quick look into the flight plan itself weather forecast there is a sigmet up here top level 330 embedded thunderstorms forecast and that's from 11 till 1200 utc so that's right in the time for flight it's 1100 now so well we are going to be aware of that and there is another one severe turbulence forecast below level 120 that shall not be a problem for us Weather in Malaga, very good, 300 degrees, 13 knots, that means runway 31 is going to be in use. Cavalcade, so hopefully we're going to have a great view on the mountains over there. Rotmut Sevilla is looking good as well, with a prop 30 tempo rain, but that's really it. And the highest temperature going 21 today, very nice. And Malaga, 25 degrees already, just beautiful for early April. Okay, so I would say there is really no reason to take any extra fuel there. Um, if we do encounter any of those thunderstorms, we can just avoid them using the contingency fuel here. Five minutes should be more than sufficient. So if we just take what we need over here, 5,000 kilograms of fuel, then we should be more than good to go. So let's have a look. Um, fuel we want to load, we said 5,000. And the rest of it we're going to leave just like that. It's a realistic amount of passengers and cargo over here for a flight like that. So um, we can just go with that, 57.2 tons. Okay, so we will load that up using GSX, and that gave us a predicted takeoff weight of 62, uh, predicted gross weight 62.2. So if we are doing our preliminary takeoff calculations of 14 right, that is correct. Um, and we just take 63 tons, then we should be good to go. All right then, synchronous weather. And do we have any sensible intersections here? Yeah, let's take Lima 1 because uh, better safe than sorry. Okay, flap 3, I don't like that. Let's do 1 plus F. Okay, here we go. Performance limited to 85.4 tons, so we don't have anything to worry about. That's very good. Okay, so then let's go ahead. APU start. Is working just fine and our radios 22.8 is set up very good and 21.5 in number two 
Awesome. Okay, starting the APU. Now, the reason I'm starting the APU that early in the process is because of the uh, temperatures. Now, I want to use the uh, APU bleed to cool the airplane down in clear skies conditions like we have them here with a temperature of about 20 degrees. The airplane is going to warm up very, very quickly. Let's see if we can actually see any of that. Let's go to the condition page. Yeah, well, the cabin is not, but the cockpit, I would call that realistic 30 degrees up here. I would definitely call that realistic. Well, let's do something about it then. This is bad. Okay, cool. So then, APU is starting. We'll turn the air conditioning on as soon as it is available. And then we can move on to our airplane acceptance. The recall for three seconds. And there is nothing in here. Very good. So then... Oxygen, let's see, 1800 is good, hydraulic quantity is good, and the engine oil is good as well. Looks like the airplane did do a flight today already, 17 quarts is a little bit less than maximum there, but okay. Alright, APU avail, awesome, and APU bleed coming on. Okay, cool, then let's turn on the lights. Also, we'll turn on the uh, signs already, since I just saw they start at the boarding already, which was rather early, but well, better early than never. And, uh, well, there is one company message in here. Let's have a quick look as to what that is. Probably the preliminary load sheet, I guess. Yep, it is. Okay, so 57171, takeoff fuel is good, takeoff weight is good. And what else do we have here? 156 passengers are forecast. That is looking all pretty good to me, and they have the fuel order of 5,000 kilos. Okay, that's awesome. So with that, we can accept the preliminary load sheet. Flaps are in agreement, speed brakes retracted. Let's test the Altman brake system. And they do work. Okay, awesome. So. Refueling has just started, and I'd say, with everything now ongoing, let's go ahead and go out for the walk around. Well, one more thing for us to do here. So, IRS alignment in progress, and then we can also have a quick look over here. A32200 CFM56, current database, initialize flight, request, and India Bravo Echo. What's going to be our flight number again? Three eight seven zero. Here we go. All right. So the pre-initialization of the FMS is complete. The rest is looking good, and um, we did turn the bleed on. Very good. Okay then. Out for the walk around. So let's go right down here on that jetway. This is where a pilot would usually get out. Beautiful A320 here. Very good looking livery, inside and out. Okay, so static ports are clear. Speedos and ice detectors, tap probe are clear. Then, static port on the front is clear. Plane is still looking straight. After my landings, that's a real surprise there. Okay, and everything looking clear on the side here as well. Nose wheel then, let's have a very quick look. Everything there, everything undamaged. That is looking awesome. Okay then. Static port, clear. Onto the side, let's see, lower part of the engine, hatches are closed, that's where it gets spectacular otherwise. Look at those engines. Actually, look at the reflection of the um, colors on the fan blades over here. That's looking really quite spectacular. Okay, then, refueling is in progress over here. Actually, just about done, it seems. Let's see. $1,608. Yeah, that's not too bad, actually. By the way, that seems about a realistic price for uh, Jet A fuel. A ton comes at approximately $1,000. 
plus a couple of discounts that the airlines negotiate, so the pricing actually looks rather realistic here. Okay then, so the wings are looking good. This time I even turned on the lights. Awesome. Okay then, nothing in the engine. Looks like the ramp agent is collecting the bill, that's good, then he can bring it to us later, and we don't have to do it. Yep, he is. That's nice. Okay then, so... No sign of any damages or anything the likes, that is always a good sign. And then continue around the plane. Leading edge of stabilizer is looking good as well. And over to the other side. Okay then, so no sign of bird strikes or anything the likes. Everything looking good. And the inside of the engine is looking good as well. Okay. No damages, no nothing. Lights are working. Then we can continue on to the front. By the way, what's that sign over here? Okay, jet fuel maximum pressure 50 psi. Okay. I do believe that is part of the livery, is it? At least I could swear I've never seen that before on the Phoenix. Okay. So, leading edges of the fan blades looking good. And with that, let's go right back into our cockpits. Okay then, here we are. So, let's go ahead and do a very quick um, setup over here. Again, the, the uh, video is intended more as a demonstration than, um, than a tutorial, so if I'm just going over things a little bit quickly here, then that is the reason why. Okay, so batteries are charging just fine. Awesome. Fueling is complete, so we will take those pumps on. Okay. And the fire test is looking good. No, not you, but... Come on, you. And let's also turn those PAs up. I did download the Iberia set from the community discord, so um, I just hope it's not going to give me another copyright strike. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first one due to those due to those sounds. But okay, I will just turn it on nonetheless and see where this is going. Okay then, let's go right into the FMS. And with our air conditioning on, we can close that window again. That's looking good. Alright, so, uh, Cosinix 17, cruising flight level 310. And here we go. So, departing Madrid, runway uh, 14 right. And we've got the Victor Tango Bravo to Sierra departure. Okay, insert that, and for Malaga arrival, uh, runway 31. Just not sure if it's going to be Yankee or Zulu, so let's go ahead and find out. So, uh, Vulpo 1 Romeo arrival. Oh, yeah, I have flown that a few times in the real world. Okay, so, Vulpo, 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 where is that stuff? Uh, here we go, Vulpa 1 Romeo arrival. Okay, so, coming from up here and all the way down, right to the final, um, to a reset. Okay, that's good. Well then, let's see for the approaches then. Probably going to be Zulu, I suppose, but let's just be absolutely sure. Yes, Zulu. That's for sure. Okay, so, Isla's Zulu, runway 3, 1. Let's see, Vulpa, One Romeo, and the transition from Razit. Okay, insert that. And secondary flight plan, copy active, and the EOS it should just bring us straight out 25 miles. So let's just add a new waypoint here. 
So, Matt X2. That's gonna be Lima, Echo, Mike, Delta, one for right, slash, what's the runway track? One, four, three. Oh, awesome, the boarding. Okay, so. Let's see, Madrid X2, that is looking correct. Okay, so the boarding is complete already, then we better hurry with um, the setup now. But obviously we still got to do it right, and that we will. Okay, so if we need a return, it's going to be 3-6, right? If I'm not mistaken. No, of course it's going to be 1-8, right? So Isla Zulu 1-8, right? So, and the extended center line. And finally the engine out point. So Matt X2 going into here. Okay, perfect. So have we gotten a preliminary load sheet yet? Because if we did, then we don't need to enter the stuff from our flight plan. Oh, we've even got a final load sheet. That's awesome. Very good. So the preliminary one was good, then we can just enter the final values over here. 57.2 and 32.8 so fuel load 5 tons and then that gives me 62.0 62.0 so we're a ton lighter for the takeoff weight then we can recalculate that as well before we do the entry so let's just quickly go um, right back to the EFB aircraft loaded thank you so, um, synchronized final, 62, 31.4, looking good, and we are going to take all this. It's going to be quite a bit of right-hand crosswind there. Calculate. Okay, so, flaps 1, down trim point 0.6, 62 degrees. So, 1 slash down 0. Point, what did I say? 0. 0.6. And 62. All right, and the speed's 293535. And 135. We've got to keep the acceleration and reduction and the engine out acceleration as well. We don't need to slow it down early, do we? No? Okay, awesome. Very good. So the last thing that I just omitted earlier is to enter the fuel data. So let's just quickly do that. So we got 0 0.3, 1.1, 1 1.1. 1 .1. So 0 0.3, 1.1. 1 .1. I really wonder why the airplane thinks it can get to its alternate with just 100 kilos of fuel here. I mean, Sevilla is like 100 miles or so. Surely not going to do that on 100 kilos fuel. Really not sure why it thinks it can do that. Alright, so just 100 kilos extra or one minute. That's good enough for me. Okay, awesome. Then, before we are going to um, do the briefing, let's quickly do the oxygen check and set the initial climb. So, Madrid, departure. So, Victor Tango Bravo to Sierra, that is what we're gonna fly. Initial climb, 13,000. like so okay 220 knots limit is on the sit anyway so we don't have to worry about speed limits and i'd say that's about it okay cool so usable between 700 and 2300 local time perfect so that's the one we're going to fly awesome i'm going to do the check of the uh, plan here shortly in the meantime ground from cockpit no reply, very good. Okay, mind your ears, oxygen check. We can unfortunately only do that in a limited way in the Phoenix here, but well, we all have to live with it.
Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome aboard this Iberia Flight 3870, taking you towards Malaga. My name is Emmanuel and I'm your captain today. With me on the flight, a lot of lovely first officers who are keen to fly us over. Flight time today, about 55 minutes. We expect a smooth ride in 31,000 feet. We would like to say thank you very much for being on board. Sit back, relax and enjoy the flight with us. If there is anything we can do for you to make it more enjoyable, please don't hesitate to ask any of our charming cabin crew. And they can do the Spanish one on their own, because I have no idea about that. Okay, so, why do they not disconnect the power? Well, doesn't matter, let's quickly do the SID first and the briefing, and then we'll take care of that problem. So, routing is Mike Delta 030. That's what we have, above 6200, maximum 220, perfect. Right turn waypoint 031, max 240 above 8100 is what we have. And then on towards um, Villa Toba above 13,000, and we do have that. Awesome. Okay, very good. So I'd say with that stuff now done, let's go ahead and uh, do the briefing, and we'll very quickly see if we can get GSX to connect now. For some reason, break us on. Okay, I don't get it. Then we have to use the uh, menu. We'll prepare for pushback and departure. And if we do that manually, I do believe we also have to remove the ground services manually. So GPU can go, chocks can go. Very good. Okay, yeah, you got the pin, I get that. All right then, ready for the briefing? FO, it's your turn. Okay, so, um, Madrid runway one for right, and it's gonna be the Villa Toba to Sierra departure. Climbing 13,000, MSA 10,000, extra fuel is just 100 kilos. Okay, that's looking very good. Um, I don't have any hotspots. Stop margin for ejected takeoff is over a thousand meters. Engine outset straight at 25 miles, and then we can come back for an approach runway 18 right. Um, if we come back, then we are going to be under the maximum landing weight, so an immediate return is not going to be a problem. Nothing special, nothing non-standard. Do you see any threats? No? Awesome. Okay. In that case, cockpit preparation checklist, please. Gear pins and covers removed, fuel quantity, 4980 kilogram balanced, seatbelts on, ADIRS, NAF, battle ref, QNH 1013. Cockpit preparation checklist complete. Ground from cockpit, go. Okay, so we will be ready for pushback in a few moments. Please confirm ground check completed, doors and hatches closed, and the pin is in place. Okay, that's all confirmed, and we'll be ready for pushback in a moment. Roger. So. Okay, ground, we are clear to push. Runway 14 right. Park and brake set. So it's going to be nose left. Okay, delta 3, delta 13, I actually don't know for sure. Let's see, ground chart. Too much nonsense charts here. Well, that one will take. Nope. Yeah. Okay, so we're pushing on Delta 13, not on Delta 3. Okay, so nose left, Delta 13. Quick okay, ground, push approved, facing south, Delta 13, parking brake is released. Roger, starting the push. Okay, before start checklist, park and brake, off, takeoff speed and thrust, V1129, VR135, V2135, flex 62, windows, 
closed, beacon on before star checklist complete. Okay, ground, we're ready for engine start anytime. Roger, you are clear to start engines. Roger, starting two, then one in sequence. Engine two start. I do have to say I'm probably more fascinated right now by the fact that engine number one changed its rotation speed while the airplane has been turned out of the wind, rather than engine two starting. Very nice effect there on the windmilling, do have to say that. Okay, so, pushback is complete, set brakes, brake set, and we're starting engine one. Engine one start. Just while I see it, could quickly set up the uh, right ND as well. Please disable the flight safe mode and turn on the built in communication only when the crew advises to do so. If the luminous sign is turned on, please turn off all your electronic devices. Man, that is a chilling sound, isn't it? That rumble comes on when the fuel is introduced. That's just awesome. Okay, ground. We've got two good starts. You're clear to disconnect. Prepare the airplane for taxi and I'll see you with the clear signal on the right hand side with the pin. Bye now. Okay, two good starts. Okay, so. Where is. There she comes, and she is holding a pin. Awesome. Good, after start checklist. Anti-ice. Off. Ecom status. Checked. Pitch trim. Is 32%. Rudder trim. Neutral. After start checklist complete. Okay, hand signal is received. And let's do the flight control check. Pull up, pull down, neutral, pull left, full right, neutral, rudder, full left, full right, neutral. Okay, next left, straight ahead, and over to Lima Charlie. Awesome. So, left side is clear, right side is clear, brake check, pressure zero. That is looking awesome. So we go straight out and then to the left. I just love it. Look at how easily the plane taxis on uh, idle thrust there. Also nice to see how they model the difference in fuel flow now, seeing that we turned the right pack off. And you can nicely see now how uh, that is saving fuel on the right hand side there. That's really good. Okay, one incoming plane and I have a feeling he's coming straight over the taxi route that we are supposed to take.
That means we got a hold short up here at dot 13. For the AI traffic, by the way, I am using FS traffic from just flight. Okay, looks like the guy is holding for us as well now. Well, come on, come in. Off to the right, please. Because this would be our standard taxi route out. I have a feeling FS traffic does probably not know about the standard taxi routes. But okay, in that case, we just gotta make a turn over here and then go southbound here via Hotel 4. Then back to the north. Okay. So off to the right hand side then after this. As mentioned, standard taxi route would have been straight over here, but if there's an airplane, then what can we do? And since we're not on Vatsim, I cannot even uh, I cannot even scream at him for not obeying to the standard taxiway system. But so be it. Okay, so I have a feeling if the AI is taxiing in via there, then we are just going to taxi out over here. That might be the easier option here. Even though there is nobody else coming, so might just return to the uh, original taxi route right over here. So, oh, clear right side. By the way, interesting safety video there, isn't it? Like, I'm not listening to everything in detail there, but that certainly does sound interesting. Okay then. Interesting as well, by the way, that the safety PA is still playing, but we've already got the cabin ready signal. Okay then. Well, they did give us the cabin ready, so I suppose we can just start with our taxi checklist. I don't have any changes to the takeoff briefing. Everything stays as it is. Okay, so taxi checklist. Flight controls checked. Flap setting. Conf 1 plus F. Radar and predictive wind shear. On and order. Engine start cell. Norm. Ecom memo. Take off no blue. Taxi checklist complete. I have a feeling there is no use of going quick here, since we're still waiting for the cabin anyway. Okay then, off to the right, onto Lima Charlie. And then we just gotta hold short the runway until the cabin is actually ready and we get the call. Seems to be a little logic there in the uh, Phoenix design of the system that you can get a cabin ready signal before the cabin is actually ready. As we can clearly hear, they're still doing the PAs in the background. Is that a taxiway sign floating in the air? Whoopsie. <laughs> nice. Thought it was the airplane supposed to fly. Do these guys have a clearance to hover there? Okay then, park and break is set. Lights are off. So, strong wind from the left, and over here it looks like it's even turned into a tailwind. Let's see, what does the latest weather look like? One nine zero at 12, slightly variable. Yeah, 
If it goes up to 240 over here, then it's a slight tailwind, but nothing to worry about for us. But tailwind on departure means that you have to put the tight stick not half forward like usual, but full forward for the takeoff run. Okay, so are they done in the back there? Now we're literally sitting here waiting. Unbelievable that they have such a long PA there. I mean, I suppose if they just started it earlier, like when the boarding was completed and after we did our announcement, then they would have been long done. Okay, so Pegasus is probably going in front of us then. Okay, looks like they're getting to an end. Yeah. Hi, Emmanuel here. The cabin is now secure for takeoff. Thank you. Okay, so suppose the Pegasus is still going in front of us. But once they are gone, then it's going to be our turn. Batman A320 Neo. No, it's not. It's the CFM engine they got down there. Lovely rolling takeoff, it seems. Okay, and off they go, I hope. Cabin crew, prepare for departure. What are they doing? Taxing down the runway at 30 knots? Traffic, traffic. Yeah, you are not supposed to complain on the ground, my friend. So, lineup checklist. Take off runway, one for right, full length. Take off, T-A-R-A, -A, and packs one and two. Off, lineup checklist complete. All right, so just timing after we took the uh, packs off, as you're supposed to wait for 20 seconds. One, four, right. Checked, and that is intentional. Okay, 20 seconds will be reached by the time we set takeoff thrust. Traffic is gone. Awesome. You ready? On Take off. runway. One, four, right. Manflex 52, SRS, a Breath Blue. Thrust set. One hundred knots. B one rotate. Oh, that's a picky wind there. Okay, positive climb, gear up. Enough, checked. That was really quite a picky wind. But we're airborne, all we can ask for. Let's go onto, ter onto terrain, that's gonna be more interesting than the weather over here. Thrust climb, climb, A thrust blue. No, A thrust white. So, pack one is coming on. Flap zero, speed checked. And pack two is coming on. So over 10 miles to make the 8,000 restriction over there should not be a problem at all.
Okay then, after takeoff flow. It's looking good. Alright, perfect. So we are in the air. Yeah, no problem making those restrictions at all over here. Absolutely no problem. It just feels strange to look at those CRT displays here. It's something I'm not used to. Really something that I'm not used to. It flies really nice. Well, it's an A320, of course it does fly really nice. There's never been any doubt about that. And it's great fun to hand fly it as well. Spanish. I was about like, why can't I understand anything? So then I'm like, oh yeah, because it's Spanish. So, passing 10,000. Cleaning this one up. Okay, so cruising 3 1, optimum 3 6, and our destination is going to be Malaga 3 1. Here we go. By the way, just a quick word here, even though we have all those cabin announcements available nowadays in the uh, Phoenix, in the real world, you wouldn't listen to them. In the real world, you just turn them off down here, and that's it. The only thing that you actually have to do is to um, have the third audio control panel, the one up here, turned on on the PA, even though you don't have to put that on the speakers, but the reason you turn it on is because the PAs do need to be recorded on the uh, flight data recorder, respectively cockpit voice recorder. Okay, 240 knots, maintaining those. And by the way, don't worry, I have seen the altimeter. It's just that when I'm doing um, pilot flying and pilot monitoring work at the same time, then obviously pilot flying stuff does have priority here. Okay, so set standard. Done a cross check passing flight level 149. Now, check. I do have to say, even though it is rather hard to actually see something on those displays because they are so dark, that really adds to the immersion because in the real Airbus, especially when you're sitting there with sunglasses on, it can be very, very hard to read those displays. And then let's go up to a cruising level 310. That's flight level 310 blue. Man, this is a lot of announcements Iberia does. A lot of announcements. I'd probably go crazy if I was a passenger and I was just trying to watch a movie or something the likes and they are talking over it the entire time. You know, the problem is, um, I don't know if they have screens in their uh, seats over here. We are going to go to the back in a few moments and check that. But um, if they do have screens built into the seats for the in-flight entertainment, then every time there is an announcement made, the uh, film is going to be paused and there will be a message coming up like PA in progress. And as a passenger, I would probably go mad if somebody did that on my flight. Okay, though. Yeah. 
so here we go from now on it's gonna be a long time of just flying straight ahead so I'll tell you what AP1 can do that just as well as we can okay then looking at flight radar 24 direct to Volpe that seems to be what they're doing mostly here so, Volpe, we're going to take the beam points and it's a nav. Okay, so. Beautiful, isn't it? Okay then, so let's just take a quick moment here to bring the cockpit into our typical cruise flight conditions with things like the en route chart and so on. Also let's turn this to daylight because why not, it's bright enough outside and of course typical en route condition also means these coming up or down respectively. And finally, yeah, might bring that one down as well. I'm going to leave it up on my side here. Even though, if you do have a look at it like this, all of a sudden, you can read the displays a bit better since the HDR brightens the cockpit up a little bit. So that's a bit of an advantage there of taking the uh, sun visor down. Interestingly enough, the lights of the aircraft flying over there just try and ride through it. While the rest, like the contrail, didn't. Oh, that was interesting. Okay, where is that guy? Plus 9,000, okay. He's definitely not going to be a problem. We'll level off below him anyway. Nonetheless, really beautiful to watch. Okay, then. Well, let's get that down. And now we just wanted to have a quick look at the uh, passenger cabin there to see if they've actually got screens in their seats. Business? No, they don't. Okay. And, well, if the business doesn't have them, then obviously economy doesn't either. Just really thought it would be uh, worth checking that. Again, really beautiful looking livery that we have over here. Um, I did already make some adverts for it in my uh, video introducing the CRT screens, but just in case you haven't seen that, then here is another look. That's the uh, livery on FlightSim.to. 8K and 4K EIS-1 Iberia Echo Charlie India Echo Foxtrot by REM13. Really great one. Really a great one. Okay, so then let's go right back to the front. Oh, well, tell you what, before we do that, let's just take a quick seat in the business class over here, have a look outside. So that's looking rather neat, isn't it? I do really like that. I do really like that. Also worth pointing out some of the dirt on the windows over here. Phoenix have done a great job with those effects. They do really give it a bit of a character here. Also the hole down here which equalizes the pressure between the um, inner plastic pane that just protects the actual window that you've got on the outer pane over here, which also takes the um, cabin pressure differential. So the inner one, just a bit of plastic to protect the outer one from scratches. And since plastic wouldn't hold the um, cabin differential pressure, that's why I got that little hole down here. Okay, apart from that though, I think I could live with this, even though I would probably like a little bit of additional lacquer room here, sitting in business class. But well, by the way, what's that? USB? Okay, join the Iberia Wi-Fi network and then access shop.iberia.com. <laughs> nice. Really nice. All those custom stickers and delivery really make it a great one. I do really appreciate this livery here. I really do. Okay then. So, back to the captain's seat here. But let's go back a little bit, like that. A typical uh, point of view for the cruise 
is when your head is just about at the aft part of the pedestal. Like that is normally where my head is when I put the seat all the way to the back, like this, before it starts to move to the right. So when you reach this point over here, normally your head is located just about right over here next to the end of the pedestal. And that is how you typically sit there throughout the cruise. Gives you a little bit more leg room, gives you a little bit um, more space. What did I do? Oh, jump seat. No, I didn't want the jump seat. I wanted the um, armrest. By the way, Abba's armrest is, an, is another funny thing to talk about as well. In the Boeing, you could really put all your weight on the armrest and it would easily hold you. When you do that in the Abbas, then you will eventually just get a very loud noise and the thing is just going to come cracking down to the lowest position because it can't really hold weight. The Abbas armrest is not designed for the pilot actually stemming weight onto it. It's only designed to support the arm in case of turbulence. And uh, yeah, that, that makes it pretty interesting to use this. And I keep falling for it time and time and time again. Okay, so just about 100 miles to run till the top of descent. And the top of descent is just located at Volper. Wow, I would probably have expected it a bit earlier. And I will probably actually start the descent a bit earlier in the flight as well. Because, um, well, they do usually make you descend a bit early in uh, Spain. Even though I do have to say that obviously we're only cruising at 310 and not the typical 370 or 380. Or sometimes even 39 that we would have been at in the 737 when we flew down to Malaga. Oh, 1,000 to go. Checked. Now, I did say in my video where I first talked about the um, CRT screens that due to the fact that we do have CRT screens now, but the actual instrumentation still is EIS-2, which is designed for the larger LCD displays and not for the smaller CRTs, that some stuff are being cut off at the edges of the displays. You can see that pretty nicely over here where some stuff is cut off over there. Or where the timer only shows you the um, last minute and not the first one so we can actually clear that out and just look at the conventional timer over here okay though and of course speed hold star if we do go rather close up to the display you can somewhat see it up here as well like the speed is being cut off or over here a little bit of the data is being cut off in the top that's just you know that just comes with it also, the um, engine warning display is obviously still the EIS-2 version, not the EIS-1 version. But in my opinion, it still makes for a great look. Just like the standby instrument, and this one is um, actually still EIS-2. We can just put the old one in if we want to. Actually, I do think, for some reason it doesn't save it, but if I go on to um, use airline settings, then... Oh, interesting. Well, then it applies these things automatically. So probably I've done that first. And should probably have aligned the standby horizon wire while we were on the ground because now, as you can see, we aligned it to a zero position, but we're actually here with a two and a half degree pitch up. So just going to keep that in mind. I mean, it is, it is worth saying that these instruments usually aren't that accurate anyway. So um, if that's a two and a half degree pitch offset, you know, I wouldn't take things for I wouldn't take things that serious. But when we start our descent, then I am just going to realign this, and then the problem is solved. Okay, so, made it all the way up then. Well, and just above 80 miles to run, so let's start having a look at our destination here. So, Malaga weather update, 300 at 11, slightly variable, Kavok 23 degrees, 1016, okay. The 1016, and on the stamp I'll just set it straight away so that we um, do have a reminder of it down here. Okay then, so let's go ahead, have a quick look into our charts and I will tell you a little bit about the general operation down in uh, Malaga Airport, which might be interesting for us for the arrival. So if you go down here, then you can see we've got um, two runways which are slightly converging onto one another. Now, today we're going to be landing down here, runway 31, but when the opposite direction is active, you might be landing on either 1-2 or 1-3. By the way, the uh, northern runway here, 3012, 
in my old company was not authorized for takeoff, it was landing only. So for takeoff only 1331. Now, with that in mind, landing 31, you come in over the shoreline, which can make for quite a bump in the approach. Because you're approaching over the cold water, well, relatively cold, it's it's uh, Spanish southern coast, so relatively cold water. But you go over the coastline, and that is where the thermals really start. Now the opposite side is really nice as well. Let's see if we do have a good radar chart here. Yes, we do. So the opposite side, Romeo 13, very nice one as well, when you come in over the mountains up here, and then you land down here in that direction. That often has tailwind, even though you've got headwind on the approach, but when you're flying over the uh, mountains, you often have tailwind there, and it is a 3.2 degree glide slope, which can make it really challenging to slow a 737 down, especially if air traffic control is keeping you up high, which they often have a tendency to do. So, final thing there, in terms of stance, obviously there I can only talk for my uh, old operator, but mostly we've been parking right up here. In some cases up here on the north, but usually it's on this part of the terminal where you park right in front of and even with the uh, low cost you are using jetways over here because if you have a jetway connected they can connect the ground air conditioning unit and if they can't connect the ground air then well you have to run the APU but APU runtime is restricted at this airport and if you exceed it then you're going to pay fine so well that much for it for the approach itself um, 3-1 easy going straight in and usually they just vector you somewhere around those um, mountains over here, or you arrive from up here. They give you direct somewhere over here, and then you go straight down, straight in, that's it. What's more... What's really more interesting is the mist approach here, because you do have that hill over here, and if you do go around and you have an engine failure right at the minimum, or right in the very initial stage of the go-around, then you are not able to clear this mountain over here. That's the reason why the mist approach goes left first, then you go through the valley until eventually up here you gotta go on top of the mountains. And then fly right back to the VOR like this. So, very interesting airport Malaga, especially in summer when it's hot, when it's 40 degrees down there, then you have thermals, you've got strong winds, especially over the mountains, strong tailwinds, and coming in for runway 13 or runway 12. So that is all something to be aware of. Also, in case you're using the uh, RAS add-on, so Romwe Alerting and Awareness System, and you're approaching Romwe 13 or Romwe 12, the RAS can't really tell which runway you're approaching, so it might just tell you approaching runways, but without saying which runway it actually is. That, and then in the very late stage of the approach, when you're somewhere down here, when it can tell for sure that you're not approaching the other one, then RAS is just going to tell you which runway you're actually approaching. Makes it quite interesting. So overall, Malaga, a really interesting airport to fly at. And at my old airline, it was really a popular base as well, because in winter it just gets below 20 degrees, but not that much. So it's nice weather in winter, and in summer then it's getting really hot, but you got lovely beaches straight by. So really beautiful airport in Malaga. Really recommendable to, to um, give it a visit, both in the real world as well as in the simulator. Okay, so with all of that done, let's have a very quick look down here into our MCDU. So, okay, we haven't received any message asking about about the um, delay, if we had any, which I'm really not 100% sure about. Let's just request the latest meta, because I kind of prefer that to looking into the EFB. It's just a bit more realistic. Okay, and, well, that's still a bug, and here we go, okay. Weather data is the same... No, it's actually just changed. I'm 1200 now. Time is... Oh, just five past. Wow, that was a quick weather update. Okay, so now it's 300 at 14. Slightly variable. Car 22 degrees. 1016 still. Okay, so... Then let's go ahead and have a look into the actual arrival. I just see a lot of waypoints here already. Okay, so then off we go. Wolper above 13. 
Yes, on to Mike, Oscar. 529, max 250 knots already down there. Man, that is why the flight takes so long. And below level 200, then on towards Palo, max 250. And we do have that. On towards Usoma, between 10,000 and level 160, then waypoint 531, max 250, above 10,000. It's also in here. On towards 729, max 230, above 8,000. That's really how they keep you above the terrain then, and slowly get you down. Then we go on towards Kisku, max 220, between 8 and 14. And we do have that as well. Okay, so then. Dudek, max 220, between 5.5 and, and 9,000. Do have that. And then on the downwind, maximum 210 knots for all those waypoints. And I'm not going to compare the names of every single one of them, but this looks very much like the chart. Okay then, ending up at Razad above 3000 and to 10 knots, which we do have. Awesome. Okay, it leads us on to the ILS then. Starting Razad, 210, 3000, Sovem 3000, Lobo 2000. And we do have all of that good stuff. So, check altitude 3.9 me, 1339. Why is it 700 in here? Oh, because it's that point. Okay, Fox India 31. Fox India 31, yeah, above 1700, that's good. Okay, missed approach then. Now, this is going to be a lovely one to check. So, intercept direct to Malaga view R, then turn left, 200 knots, intercept follow radial 269 to 7.7 DME. Okay, MGR. Left, 269, 7.7, .7, that's a hotel. Yep, 210 knots. And then right and turn, 010 to intercept. We got 010 to intercept, that's a little bit hard to see up here, but looks about right. And that's maximum 5000, which we do have in here as well. Alright then, straight to third, uh, 23 DME Malaga and then join the 25 DME arc. Yeah, which we do have over here. And we leave the arc when passing radial 337 at the D337 Yankee point, which we do have in here. So, according to the plane above 6.5, and, and indeed 6.5 and or above, then to right, follow inbound radial 342, direct to Malaga VOR, joint holding at 7000 or above. Okay, so 162, that's the opposite of 342 so that does make sense and climbing to 7000 also makes sense so we can set 7000 straight away on the missed approach man that's a complicated one okay so that means for our navigation we'll need mike lima golf and that's gonna be on 269 and then we need another mike lima golf which is going to be on 311. And the last one we just have to do later, manually then, or have to edit it. I mean, as soon as we're established on the 311, we can just edit the course in here, 162, back in mount to the VOR, and then we have it. Okay, easy going. So, let's see, descent speed 274, mark 0.74. Yeah, that does roughly make sense. And uh, let's just see how timely are we running. 12.46 versus what does the schedule say? 12.50. Uh, tell you what, if we can win a minute over here, let's do 0.74 slash 300. If they relieve us of the 250 knot speed restriction, which I have a magic feeling they're going to do, then that's really going to help us there. Okay, so for the approach, 1016, latest temperature was 22 again, and the wind, let's just look it up. Oh, ops, no ADC required, lovely, thanks, and weather data, 300 at 14. Here we go. Okay then, let's see, what's the minimum gonna be? Oh boy, too many different uh, numbers. 
So let's just see. Can we actually calculate different mist approach gradients in here? So 316 is good. Reflash apply. Low auto brake, idle reverse. Auto thrust on, flaps. Let's try config 3 first. Manual landing is correct. Okay, looks like we can't calculate mist approach gradients in this, which is a pity because we would obviously have to calculate that before we choose any of the minima over here. But let's take the uh, 4% because the airplane will be able to do that. So 320 is going to be our minima. All right then, let's just see. Fuel on the arrival 2.6, 3.2, so burning 600. Landing weight 59.7. Let's calculate 59.9 because I have a feeling we might get a little shortcut on the approach earlier on. So 50, tell you what, 60 tons. 2,179. Looks good for me. So config three, low auto brake, and flap three. Perfect. We're gonna stay on terrain over here. And take that on both sides because the weather is good as we can clearly see and well with that i would say i'll do a quick pa to our passengers and then we do the approach briefing ladies and gentlemen from the flight deck this is your captain speaking we're going to start our descent towards malaga in the next few minutes weather over there at 22 degrees with clear skies we do expect some marvelous views of the surrounding area on our approach, especially on the left side, but also on the right side of the airplane. And with that, we would like to say thank you very much for flying Iberia today. Hope that you have enjoyed your stay on board, and we look forward to welcoming you all again on board of a future flight. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for choosing us for your on-time arrival today. And with that, we would like to say goodbye to you now. Thank you very much, and see you all again soon. Okay, so passengers are dealt with, Tika's going into below already, then I'd say we can start our approach briefing. And let's just get rid of that. Okay, so MSA 9000 the highest, Volpe to Romeo arrival, Islas Zulu, Romeo 31 minimums, it's gonna be 320 barometric with a 4% go around gradient. Go around trajectory, we talked about that straight ahead view R, left turn 269 outbound to 7.7, .7, right turn heading 010, intercept radio 311, intercept the 23 DMI arc, and then a right turn turn again on a bearing 162 Malaga view R, climb to 7000 feet with a restriction of 3800 and 6500 feet on the approach due to terrain. <laughs> okay, let's just quickly start the descent over here. We'll make it flat level 200. Okay, so extra fuel and time, 12 minutes, 400 kilos, and then it's your turn now. Okay, my turn you set. So guidance is going to be an ILS approach using localizer and glide slope. I might make it a raw data approach at the later stages, but we will see about that. Um, landing flaps config 3, stop margin is about 1,300 meters. Reverse us idle, auto brakes low, and that brings us to an exit somewhere along the right hand side where the airplane is able to stop. Now, I don't have anything uh, special or non-standard. Do you have any threats? Well, terrain is a bit of a threat there, um, and to mitigate against that, we have the train displays on. Also, bird strike is a possibility as it is a rather bird-prone airport, and this time of the year with um, all the um, birds moving through, I wouldn't be surprised if we do find one or another. Okay, any questions? Nope. Awesome. That's the briefing complete. Okay, so down we go. The plane has drifted straight down to the minimum. Why is that? Does it not have wind data? No, indeed, it doesn't. Okay. Well, in that case, let's just go select it.
just want to make sure that we don't get too slow on the arrival. We could fly that 260 knots, but why would we? Especially if we are running rather timely here. And we do want to be on block on time today. So 300 knots is actually quite a good thing here. And here we go. All right, look at that terrain up here. Really beautiful. Now, it gets even more interesting when you fly here in uh, high summer, when they regularly have temperatures over 40 degrees centigrade here in southern Spain, then anything that looks even remotely green down here right now is just going to be gray and gray, or orange and orange, as you want to call it. What's also really important for uh, pilots flying in this general area is that there are wildfires breaking out in uh, summertime so whenever you see some do report it to air traffic control because there are a couple of rather remote areas where there are very few population centers as you can see when looking outside and there's a small town over there but looking just in front over here if anything burns in those uh, planes then the entire area might just light up in flames so the earlier something is reported the earlier the um, firefighters can do something about it. And they do have dedicated aerial firefighters here in uh, southern Spain who do take care of these kind of things. So really important that pilots do help out there. Now, up here come the famous mountains in the area of Malaga. But I can tell you they do look a little bit more impressive in the real world than they do right here in the sim. Maybe by the time we get closer, But well, we'll see about it. So the area around Gibraltar is covered in clouds, it seems. Typical weather scenario for this time of the year. And then let's continue our descent. Let's make that flight level 150 at first. Okay then, and let's say ATC is going to scrap our um, speed restrictions here. Direct my goal 531. And insert. Here we go. That looks more like my taste. Okay then, beautiful. That train is just so great. Let's go to the outside and watch that for a minute. And the Airbus is, of course, looking great as well. Okay then, back inside. I do know it is a little loud out there, so inside is certainly nicer. So let's see, how low below profile are we? 4,000, okay. So if we just maintain 1,000 feet a minute all the way down, we should be good to go. Also going to maintain the 300 knots up here. Beautiful. Just got to make sure that we catch the right moment to um, initialize our further descent then. So a quick look at the approach chart. So let's see, we're in mount 531. That means the Kisku 140 below restriction is probably the next one that's going to be limiting for us. I tell you what, let's make it Kisku at 8,000 feet. Insert that, let's see what VNAV is doing now. Oh look, we're spot on. Surprise, surprise.
And if we are on it already, just gotta make sure that we are outside the range of the highest train here. If we take a direct to Kisku now, that should take us outside that range. Okay, go direct Kisku. Here we go. Manage speed. And descend now. Let's take a look at the radar chart. I do believe 10,000 should be safe here. Yeah, look at that. We can already go down to 7,000. Very good. Oh. That's flight level 80 magenta. Yeah, I'll tell you what. If we inserted that 80 restriction, we're also going to take that. Okay, set Q and H. QNH 1016 cross check passing 15,600 now. Check. Seatbelts on. Okay, over there is the airport. Over there is the city. I mean, I do believe it's the one to the north of the airport, not the one to the south of it, but don't quote me on it. And over here are the hills through which you arrive when you go, come in for only 1 3. Really nice scenario as well. I did originally think about recording the video yesterday, because yesterday 1-3 would have been in operation, but they had such a hazy day down there that I really thought like, nah. It really adds some immersion to it, doesn't it? So, 5,500 coming in over here. Gracias por orar con nosotros. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be landing the airport in a few minutes. Please check that your carry-on items are put away. The back of your seat is in the full upright position. Your table is pulled away and that your seatbelt is fastened. From now on, all air devices must be in flight mode or disconnected and laptops must be switched off and stored away. All devices must be unplugged from power sockets. Thank you for flying with us. Okay. Beautiful coming in across those mountains, isn't it? Though I do have to say, they do look more impressive in the real world than they do in the sim down here. But so be it, huh? Nice little bridge down here, by the way, isn't it? Okay, Malaga, there it is. Okay, approach checklist, please. Barrel reference, QNH 1016, seatbelts on, minimum, barrel 320, auto brake, low, engine start so, norm. Approach checklist complete. Okay, so 5500 is safe over here, and let's go down to just that. That's flight level 8 zero magenta, but tell you what, let's go open descent now. Ooh, that was quite a hefty pitch up there. Okay, well, tell you what. Manual flight.
and we can tidy up over here as well. That's better. So, Kisku 220 knots, reducing speed. And well, we are well visual with the train. I'll turn the train display off on my side, because that makes the constraints visible a little bit nicer. Do have to say they are rather heat to read up here, like over here at Dudek, I really need to stick my head all the way up to the screen in order to be able to read that. Okay, one guy coming in over here. And we are now going into the 2,000 feet area, so 2,000 blue. And I'll tell you what, let's continue in present heading here. We will just vector ourselves in now. So extend center line out of Lolbo. Interesting that the speed target is going back up again. Really should not have done that. But we'll deal with that in a moment. So, Lolbo, radial in, insert. Okay, full heading again, like that, and activate approach phase. Let's activate it itself. Interesting. Okay then, let's help the plane a little bit. So, manual flight, full speed brake is definitely going to give us more than it would in um, the autopilot. And we can put 220 in again as speed restriction here. It's a lovely descent angle, isn't it? So what works really nicely for uh, vectoring yourself in is when you've got a medium-ish speed, like 220 right now, as soon as the glide slope starts coming alive, we'll make our base turn. That is usually going to give you a very nice um, approach. Yeah, glide slope is alive. Turn right, heading 230, base. And now we don't need the speed brake anymore either. Come on, Airbus. Man, I needed quite a... I really needed quite a pitch down input to get that back to... Um, to get that back. Okay then, for the right hand turn, heading... What's that gonna be? 31280, uh, clear dial S. Flaps 1. Speed checked. Flaps 1. Hi, oh, Emmanuel here. The cabin is now secure for landing. Thank you. Flat director is definitely overreacting here. Okay, here we go. That's looking good. Okay, flat rectus off, turn on. Okay, let's use a little bit of thrust here to slow that descent down. 500 feet a minute should be sufficient. 2,500. Check. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. Localizer alive. Set runway track, 312. Runway track set.
slight overshoot, nothing to worry about. That's all within limits. Man, listen to those sounds. That's lovely, isn't it? Okay, so nice 17 knot headwind here. Flight log capture. Flaps 2. Speed checked. Set Goron altitude, 7000. Set. Okay, gear down. Flaps 3, speed check, flap 3. Landing checklist, income memo, landing no blue. Landing checklist complete. Okay, we are back on glide. Speed is now nicely coming back. Stable through 1000, perfect. Okay, looks like there is no traffic in the immediate vicinity of the runway, that is good. There is one guy coming in behind us, but he's still like four miles out from us. So we don't need to be worried about separation with him. Man, listen to those sounds. Continue. It's windy, still 20 knots up here. Reverse green diesel. Manual brakes. Okay, welcome to Malaga. So that was an interesting approach. Definitely like those turbulence over here. It, it did give us a little bit to do. Okay then. So, off to the right hand side. Don't remember it being this sloped over here. Like, this was really rather extreme getting off the runway. Wasn't that bad in the real airport. Probably some Microsoft Flight Simulator elevation thingies here. But well, we can live with that. Okay then, and welcome to Malaga. Okay, so Okay, so 
<laughs> quite uh, laggy when we are zooming in on the charts here. All right, so we're going right down here, gate 26, I believe it is. So back in the day on Ryanair, this was usually where we parked. I do have to say it looks pretty, pretty darn accurate. Look at that. That's pretty darn accurate. Pushbacks were always interesting over here as well. You always pushed facing the terminal over there onto this inner taxiway and then you sometimes just did a 180 like this and just taxied out. It was always interesting. Always an interesting airport to fly to. Also because it is a training airport for Spanish air traffic controllers and that basically meant that anything could happen to you. Okay, so APU start. Come on, tap. Where are you going? Ah, they stopped. Okay. Nice. Okay, so next to the left then. On to gate 6. Note they call them gates and not golf here in Malaga. So APU is avail. Engine 2 shut down. And electric hydraulic pump on. Okay, after landing checklist, radar and predictive wind shear, off, after landing checklist complete. <sighs> Might have to help it a bit. A little bit of thrust there. And back to idle. Okay, lights off. And 26, here it is. Maybe a little bit fast right now, correcting for that. So, A320 is on the docking system. Man, airplane, what are you doing? But the too far is definitely not correct. Oh, it's interesting. It accelerated in the turn, even though we were an idle thrust single engine. And look at that. The parking location is definitely wrong. Gotta go up at least until here. So, tell you what, we'll just taxi a few more meters, even though it does say too far over there already. That is definitely not configured correctly. Let's stop here. That should be fine. Okay, so, that's the brake set. Okay, shutting down. Spanish announcements telling cabin crew dis on slides. Or all doors in park or whatever the um, phraseology for them actually is in Iberia. Okay, here we go. Now well, let's do it realistically. As soon as the external power is available, you're going to shut the uh, APU down in uh, Malaga. They will connect the jetway, and once the jetway is connected, they are going to um, also connect the uh, air conditioning unit. I don't think Phoenix is going to do that automatically. PCA, here we go. Okay, PCA is on, APU is off, APU bleed is off, and that's it. So, park and checklist, please. So, park and break our trucks. Uh, that will be the trucks in position already. So, engines off, wing light off, fuel pumps off. And that's the parking checklist complete. Alright guys, I do hope you enjoyed this little flight. And I do hope you enjoyed this little deviation into Iberia operations. Now, certainly a lovely livery here and uh, just a lovely feeling to fly those CRT screens, honestly. 
even though it is still an EIS-2 fitted to the plane, it just gives it that special feeling. And honestly, some very nice airports in the area here as well with things like um, Malaga or Sevilla, nice in summer as well, temperatures up to 45, sometimes even 50 degrees making for some really interesting operations there. So definitely worth checking out, especially once high summer has come. Definitely worth flying into here. Scenery is from MK Studio, by the way, looking pretty good as well. Really got to say that. But at the same time, I do have to add, I did not get it as a gift or something. So it's my honest opinion that it is really neat um, flying into here. So with all of that, I do hope that you all have enjoyed this flight with us and I see you all again in the future. Now, if you're up for more, don't forget to hit like, comment, let me know what you think about it and subscribe if you're up for more. And as always, if you really love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me a Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching and see you all again on the next one.